This is the laboratory subcomponent for the female reproductive segment, the histology of the ovary for anatomy 2203. Please examine slide number 9 from your slide box of a mammalian ovary for the following structures. Using the scanning objective, course around this particular section, a very large section of the ovary, and note that it consists of two basic subcomponents, an outer lying cortex, which is shown here, and it contains the majority of the follicles at various stages of development. If one course is more towards the interior, into this area sort of being outlined by the pointer, that contains large blood vessels and connective tissue. This is known as the medulla of the ovary. Note as you peruse around the cortical region that the follicles are in various stages of development and are in different sizes. Primordial follicles are located at the tip of the arrow, very early growing follicles. Then we have more mature ones as this maturation process takes place, and then finally some very large mature graphian follicles that contain an ovum that will be released at ovulation. So now let's go back over here in this area of the cortex, uh, and one can perhaps see just a little bit better uh, the very earlier young primordial follicles, some growing follicles, and a little bit more mature follicles here, uh, uh, known as secondary follicles. The tunica albiginia also surrounds the ovary as it did the testis, so it's this dense connective tissue band right here, and we'll see that it's going to be surfaced by a uh, peritoneal covering of mesothelium, known as the germinal epithelium of the ovary. Let's go down and look at these now at increased magnification. This is the very edge of the ovary, seen at high magnification. And what we're demonstrating here is the mesothelial covering of the ovary, sometimes referred to in the early literature as the germinal epithelium, but it's simply the peritoneal covering of the ovary. This dense connective tissue band made up of fibroblast-like cells and collagen, sort of being covered and traced by the arrow, is the tunica albiginia. And all of these large structures here are known as primordial follicles. This would be the oocyte contained within the primordial follicle. Its cytoplasm, uh, the arrow now indicates, this is the edge of the nucleus and one can see here a very distinct nucleolus within the nucleus as well. There's a similar one here. So all of these large light staining structures are the ova or the oocytes uh, within the tunic cortex, excuse me, the cortex of the ovary. This flattened layer of cells, very flattened squame like cells, is a layer of cells known as follicular cells. So the follicular cells and the oocyte constitute these primordial follicles. And as one courses along the ovary, you can see this scenario continues to repeat itself over and over again. These are very, very large cells, the oocytes, huge cells, and like neurons, they are some of the largest cells uh, in the body. Now, if one course is towards the interior, we should be able to find a much larger uh, growing follicle and examine it at this magnification. Now this is another field of primordial follicles, uh, and as one course is this way, we run into this structure, which is one of the growing follicles, called a primary follicle. So this would be a primary follicle, primordial. Uh, so it's beginning to grow. Notice that the follicular cells have begun to proliferate and round up and become cuboidal in shape. We're just nicking the cytoplasm of the oocyte contained within this follicle, and one can see a little pink membrane here, so a zona pellucida, a thin homogeneous membrane, uh, is just now being uh, produced and laid down. Now, if we course along, we should be able to find perhaps a few others. 
let me get this into focus again. Here we can see two other primary follicles. Remember, these are just growing uh, follicles. So you have your layer of follicular cells here, the oocyte, which does show the nuclear profile, and this is just a section through the edge of another one of these growing follicles, which could be classified as a primary follicle. So those are two growing follicles, and over here, just for comparison's sake, one can see a whole field of primordial follicles. Note once again in the primordial follicles, the follicular cells are thin, flattened, squame-like cells and constitute a single layer. If we go back to the growing follicles, one can see that these follicular cells have cubed up, they start proliferating, get taller, and will form a layer of stratified follicular cells that will surround the larger uh, and more mature growing follicles. This is a region of several other uh, maturing or growing uh, type follicles, uh, seen with a slightly less seen at slightly less magnification. So one is shown here. You can see how the follicular cells are beginning to stratify. You can see another larger one here. And then another growing follicle or maturing follicle here with the development of a layer of uh, follicular fluid or an antrum it is referred to, a collection of fluid within this particular follicle. Uh, so that's an antrum and when that antrum appears this form of maturing follicle is referred to as a secondary rather than a primary follicle. We can just see a nick through the zona pellucida and the contained lighter staining oocyte as indicated by the pointer. Notice that the follicular cells continue to grow, continue to proliferate, and uh, are stratified. This is that same field of growing oocytes as examined uh, earlier. Uh, in the, in the previous clip. Now if we move the field, we can see a larger maturing follicle, yet a larger one, a huge secondary follicle. Again, you can see the continued stratification of the follicular cells. You can see the oocyte here and a surrounding uh, zona pellucida there. You can see how large this uh, follicle has become if you compare it with a primordial follicle as seen at the tip of the arrow there. And these follicles, the same features continue to get larger and larger and larger. Here we have a more mature one approaching a graphene follicle. The oocyte is here with the surrounding zone of pellucida, that little pink band. And you can see the large follicular antrum uh, shown there as indicated by the arrow. And then finally a very large mature follicle we're not seeing the uh, oocyte. We're only seeing the follicular wall made up of uh, follicular cells shown here. Now as these large follicles continue to grow and the, uh, the liquor folliculi fills that antrum, this uh, space here with this uh, fluid, the cells surrounding the follicles in the stroma begin to line up and surround uh, the follicular cells and this forms a, a connective tissue or capsular like structure around the follicle uh, that's not mentioned in your laboratory guide known as the theca and so this little capsule around you can, it becomes very vascularized is the surrounding theca that also uh, contributes to the wall of the follicle and becomes very vascular and is responsible uh, in many instances in, in its nutrition. And here you can see it uh, developing here uh, and orientated around uh, the follicle. I have now moved back to the using the scanning objective to show you once again uh, the follicular stages of follicular development. The primordial follicles you can see are located here. Now if we move this over just slightly, one can see the progression of the maturing follicles as they grow. Uh, primaries here, a secondary early one, later one, and then finally 
getting over to the very mature graphene follicles such as this one here and this other one and these are the types of follicles which will uh, rupture through the surface eventually and liberate the ovum or uh, ova at the time of ovulation.